Hi, I'm JB Squiddy and oh well, it's about time. Over the past two years I focused on making art with PowerPoint and I made quite a lot of cool things, even some animations. And the most of you loved it, but every time the same question over and over again. Can you make a tutorial? Yes, I can. So today I decided to start a simple project to show you everything I do. Everything. And I promise, no time lapses, so you can just follow along. Last week I bought a small cactus and I think that could make a nice artwork. Let's open this precious software and delete everything. Okay, so now we can just start making some shapes that look like a cactus. PowerPoint makes it possible to edit the points of a shape, so of course we're going to use that. We don't focus on colors yet, because that will make it easier to explain stuff. What I'm doing now is using circles and transforming them into little cactus hands. It's not that hard. Ctrl C copies the object and Ctrl V pastes the object. Mm, yeah, okay, trust me, a third hand is going to look good. Yeah, that should be good. Okay, the body is pretty big and I don't want it to look empty. So let's fix that by adding an extra shape to indicate that the cactus is 3D. I think that's pretty good. Now it's time to give it some spikes. I do that by using the triangle and editing the points. I don't actually edit the points, but I only edit the impact of the point on the outline. By holding shift while resizing an object, it will keep the aspect ratio. Even though we're not focusing on colors, I'm still going to erase the outline and add a random color to it, because now the tiny spikes are more visible. Oh, by the way, don't forget to save your project and hit Ctrl S whenever you're bored. Then you may continue without having to worry about PowerPoint crashing again. I'm going to add some small circles for the spikes that are facing our direction. Let's leave the cactus alone and start with a simple background. I want the background to be a nice smooth shape, so I use a frame to hide the background. First I make the shape of the hole. Mm, yeah, then a square, as big as the entire slide. 
send it behind the circle, select the square first, then the circle, merge and subtract. There you go. Make it white as if nothing has happened. When I make the background I don't want to select a spike or something, so let's select the entire cactus and group it. Whoop. I need everything. Ctrl Z, I want you. Group. So now you see, oh you bastard. This is the reason we group stuff. Okay, so now you see we can hide stuff. I think some kind of desert is nice. So pick the smooth line tool thing and make some sand. I'm going to make multiple layers of sand because that will look cool when we add some color gradients to it. Using backspace you can remove the previous point and of course you can always edit the point later on. Let's give the background a random color so we can see what we are doing since the frame is white. satisfied mm, no I'm not it's still a little boring and basic it needs something that pops mm, oh yeah that pops we need to give him a balloon that way I can also show you how glossy objects work in PowerPoint let's just Take a spike and use it as the thingy under the balloon. Yep, uh, we need a line as well. Hold shift to keep it a vertical line. Okay, group and crop the balloon so you can give it to the cactus. I'm going to make a few adjustments here. Yeah, okay, good. I would say we call it a day and move on to the coloring. Select everything with Ctrl A and remove the outline. Oh, except for this line of course. Bring the cactus to the front and now we start using gradients. I always begin with the sky because it is the biggest part, so it also has the biggest impact on choosing the other colors. I think I will go for pink because the green cactus will definitely stand out. Right here is a gradient bar on which you can add color points. The gradient will do the rest for you.
rotate here you can rotate the gradient which is great if you don't like the presets. When I'm not sure if a certain color is a good choice I often just ignore the gradient for a second. There's always a basic color for a shape and if it fits then you can move on to the gradient and add some more colors. Selecting a gradient for a solid filled shape will always pick the last used gradient. But luckily the picked colors from before are always saved in the last used section. So we have our font layer of sand and the mountains in the back. The sand layer between them needs to merge them a little bit together. So I use both colors and turn the transparency a bit up. Great. Now for the cactus we need some green. I think yellow will serve well as light part and a little more blue for the darker parts. Let's apply this gradient to the entire cactus and then we adjust the direction for every part. Make sure the little hands start with a darker color than the body so it looks like they come from behind. Now for the middle part on top I use the same gradient but a little less dark. looks juicy. Ok, select all of the spikes and send them out of the group by cutting and pasting them. Then group because we want them to share a gradient. Now 
it's time to shine for the balloon. First I'm getting this line right. Because I wanted to have a simple reflection of the cactus, blue was probably a good choice. uses a standard gradient when two color points are at the very end of the gradient bar. Moving them a little bit will automatically give you a better saturated gradient. give the line a gradient too. For the glossy effect I make a white circle with a transparent gradient, like we did on the orange sand layer. Copy and paste a tiny one. For the reflection I need another one, but I need to have a curvier shape that fits the shape of the balloon. Let's add the same colors as the cactus and a bit of transparency. Okay, so here comes an easy trick. PowerPoint doesn't allow advanced gradients, but I found a way to still get a multi-directional gradient. Copy the object, and we need the original too. So I'm going to ungroup this balloon real quick to see what's going on, I will add the gradient to this one. Now select both shapes and align them to the left and top. Send the extra gradient just on top of the other one. Be gone. Gone. Thank you. Okay, change the gradient you do not need to be completely transparent. And there you go. I'm just going to make another reflection thing to make it look fancy. Cactus may be slightly bigger. Cool. The last thing I want to add is a shadow right here. So 
select the sand and the shadow, merge, intersect. Of course it deleted both shapes, but I got this shape back. So copy, Ctrl Z to undo and paste it. Let's pick a nice color for it and make a fading gradient. Send it behind the cactus and done. Okay, I lied. There's one more thing I want to add. It's some hills in the distance. Okay, there's always something to add, but let's just stop here. I think we did a really good job on making a sweet artwork in PowerPoint. And I'm absolutely curious about how you guys did this. Because honestly, you should be really proud if you followed all the way through. I hope this tutorial helped. Maybe consider subscribing if it did, because it helps me grow and reach more people like you. Thanks for watching, and I will hopefully catch you later. Bye!